G'day everyone, I'm the anti theocrat with you for another one. Um, I've actually recorded this one and totally rendered it and had it ready for uploading and then thought I really could have done better. I slept on it before I got to upload it, left it rendering overnight and unfortunately woke up thinking, uh, I don't know, I don't know where to go with this one. There are so many problems in the way we deal with uh, the Aboriginal people in Australia. And for me, this is the, it's sort of the epitome of doing nothing for all the wrong reasons. As opposed to my other concern is the creation of welfare dependence. And now I've actually had long chats with Aboriginal mates of mine about these topics because I used to perform at uh, Aboriginal events and and I had Aboriginal mates and I worked in art where there were Aboriginal people that I quite got along with. Um, I have an Aboriginal mate who didn't get his elders, uh, his, he wasn't granted his eldership as he had well and truly passed the age for it. Uh, he didn't get it granted because he thinks a lot like I do, that the Aboriginal people need to get up and lift their game, look after themselves, be be the strong women that feminism demands, that sort of thing, you know. Stop asking other people to do for you. And yes, we've created a lot of welfare dependence amongst the Aboriginal people, but this isn't that story. Uh, although that's a major concern for me, this is about LARPing as Aboriginal. It's sort of how I see it. It would be like me going looking for my Dutch heritage because my mother's Dutch born. Um, I have no connection to my Dutch heritage beyond salted licorice, roll mops, which is pickled herrings, and the best ones come with a pickle and peppers in the jar, which I just can't get out here. Uh, I also have to order my salted licorice if I want it. Um, and roll, uh, oily bollen, which is a heavy deep fried ball of dough with fruit in it. And um, the word, the word telepulcher, which is teaspoon. And the phrase that will neat, which essentially means that will not do. Um, that's as much as I know of my Dutch heritage beyond I've been to Holland and there are dikes everywhere. Um, and it's as flat as a pancake. Beyond that, I don't really care. I'm an Australian. I was raised an Australian. I, I think this is the best country in the world. I've seen a bit of the rest of the world and this is a lovely place to be. Uh, so... I'm going to go on with this story of LARPing. Let's see where we go. Well, let's get off that for a start. Wrong page up. God, who's, who's setting this stuff up? Me. Only me to blame. Right. Indigenous teenagers find a connection to country at the sacred lands of Lake Mungo. Now, Lake Mungo is significant because apparently it's where the remains of the, the oldest remains of people in Australia were found, which they are proclaiming means that the Aboriginal people have been in Australia longer than we had thought. Now, I thought when I was growing up it was about 45,000 years. I think they still in this story say it's about 45,000 years, so I don't know where that extension came from. Uh, I don't know. Look, I, I just don't care. It doesn't matter. You could have said you were here for 500 years or a thousand years or 100 million years. I don't think it changes anything. We're at a different place in our uh, evolution as a species now, as it, in our cultural evolution and so forth. So let's take a look at this story, shall we? Abby loves Snapchat, hanging out with her friends, and is obsessed with hair and makeup, but the 15-year-old from the outer from outer suburban Melbourne has questions about her family history. 
that have led her to venture far from home. Abby's mum's side is Greek. On the other side, she's indigenous, a Yorta Yorta woman. Now, I actually have some interest in where this Aboriginality is. And I know that these days Aboriginality is easy to come by. I've been offered it myself. I don't actually know if I have any Aboriginal heritage and I'm not going looking for it. There is a chance, but I'm not going looking for it. But what we know about Abby is that her mother is was Greek born or has a very close connection to her Greek heritage. So maybe she's second generation Greek uh, immigrant. What we don't know is where the Yorta Yorta comes from. I'm not even sure why it's important she's a Yorta Yorta woman as opposed to a Yorta Yorta man. But, um, and I've looked up the Yorta Yorta. We'll have a chat about that too. Um, but I think if it, this was a, a parent or a grandparent who had brought in this Yorta Yorta connection, we'd be hearing about it. So I'm just concerned about how far back poor Abby had to be dragged to realise that she had Aboriginal blood. Because I felt more connected to Mum's side being Greek because we, we've we always traditional events on, she said. So I grew up knowing more of Greek culture than being Indigenous. Essentially, I'm not sure if she even knew she was Indigenous until someone mentioned it to her. She, she seems to have had very little contact with anything Indigenous in her life. There's no talk of her connection to her Indigenous stuff. So someone else has beat this up and, and played it out. But maybe also they offered her a free trip somewhere to go and do some shit and she went yeah okay maybe it's that i don't know but i do have um concerns about this while abby is proud of her yorta yorta heritage the rich rich stories cultural traditions remain a mystery well actually i said i'd looked up the yorta yorta and one of the maps that I've closed down, I the one I started up on, this is this is actually a map of the known Aboriginal countries, right? In Australia, my understanding is there's more than five hundred of them, um, and I found links that said there are currently seven hundred and twenty twenty known languages. The odd thing about that was that that was an increase number of from eight from the last time that there was a count. And apparently one language had been retired. And I'm not sure how you retire a language. Most of these languages are dead anyway. But how do you retire a language if there is evidence it existed? I'm a bit concerned about how they get these numbers and where they find these languages. Also, there were a lot of languages uh, not... Uh, there were some 160-something-odd languages that had evidence that they had... Ex that there was some evidence of their existence, uh, but no solid proof. And they had um, also excluded a lot of languages that had no evidence of existing. Who's telling you there were languages that existed that have no evidence? If there is no evidence evidence then there was no language it's that simple did someone say i think that guy over there spoke a different way than i did that's not proof that's not that's not even worth noting that's dead we just call it a dead language we call it storytelling at the, at the best it's a guy telling a story about the guy over the hill but anyway i i regress as I will do a lot. <laughs> um, so th these girls have gone to Lake Mungo. Now, in terms of uh, where they are, right? Uh, I also want to um, 
getting to this. Right. Lake Mungo is 900 kilometres from Abbey's home in Melbourne. These are different cultural and language groups within the Aboriginal spheres, right? So what we're looking at is she's from down here at the bottom. You can see my little mouse waving around down there. There it is. Whee! She's from down here. Apparently, she, her people are from here. But they've taken her to some place up here to do art and craft work. That's essentially what they've gone to do. Right? These, oh, I should warn you, this entire article is actually an ad for Anglicare. Anglicare don't mind scrounging some of the blackfella dollars to um, run these short-term useless projects that, that achieve nothing and do nothing for anybody. But there's money to be had. The government will pay for you to run these projects. And Anglicare are very good at getting that money. Not the only religious group who's good at getting this sort of money. Uh, but I've seen Anglicare at work. I was, in, I was a sideliner uh, traveling with other people who... Uh, we're doing an Anglicare youth program in Melbourne. And essentially, it was do some walking around, have a chat, and do some art and craft. That was the whole two days of the project. It achieved nothing, didn't make anyone happy to be there. In fact, look, the stoners I was with just went back home and got stoned again and went on partying, you know, went on doing what they did. But, you know, it was it was a lark. Someone offered them a free weekend on government money to go and do some art and craft and shit. I didn't actually see that much art and craft being done by that lot, but then I knew that lot and they weren't art and crafters. Um, more like skaters and stoners. Uh, so, yes. She's down here. Her people are apparently from up here. She has no connection to this, even this part of the world. She's she, Melbourne girl has probably never even travelled this far into the country. I'm from up here, for the record. So um, this is where I am at the moment, up here. But they dragged her over here. So not her people, not her cultural ground way far from anywhere she may have travelled in the past. Uh, a lot of people in this country will go here. This is their travelling ground, right? Some go up here. I've been all over this, so I, I've actually travelled all of the country. I, I Rarity in this country, really, there's not many of us. But, um... A lot of people never make it out of the cities and never make it out of their, their comfort zones. Okay. Uh, this girl here, Georgia, she's a different case altogether. Georgia actually works with Aboriginal kids in her community. Now, Georgia, you would think, would be... Uh, I'm also guessing Greek heritage there too, so uh, Greek Aboriginal mix. But she actually works in childcare with Aboriginal people. And her people are actually from Melbourne, down here. She lives and works with Aboriginal kids in the tribal lands. Uh, I never experienced a hell of a lot of Aboriginality in Victoria. The only Aboriginal I really met with to any degree when I was starting out in high school, uh, I, I essentially started high school in Victoria and buggered off north. That's when my main uh, involvement with Aboriginal people started was when I moved north. The only Aboriginal I really... Not really. I knew people who were Aboriginal, but they didn't trade on their Aboriginality. The only real Aboriginal I met burned me with a bloody cigarette for a laugh on the train to school one day. Um, and apparently he was already um on parole so you know the school didn't want to do anything about it tell me who's the privileged classes in the country anyway why have they going back to the map why have they flown this girl from her tribal lands down here where she actually has connection to them to up here in the fucking sticks i can tell you now the people down here are different 
uh, right? This is my family's ground, the stomping ground. My father's stomping, father's family stomping ground down here. This is so different from up here; it's unbelievable. Down here, and I only actually learned this after I finished school. I found history books from around the time I was in school um, that talked about it, but it's not something that came up in my learning. But there were actually stone hut fishing villages in this part of the country. The Aboriginals were not the way we are taught Aboriginals are. Most of what we learn of what Aboriginals are comes from up here. All right. Up here in Arnhem Land, we learn of uh, Aboriginals who go and hunt turtles. We, we see those on television now, but most of our understanding of Aboriginals comes from this big dry bit in the middle where they they live in on dry country they move around they they don't have settlements as such they, they are very tribal okay but these were settlement aboriginals and these were probably settlement aboriginals but this is moving into tribality this is moving into roaming tribes this is dry, desolate country for a lot of the time. And I'm from up here, so, you know, I know what this is all like. I, I live out here. Why would they take this girl from Melbourne and place her up here and tell her she's learning to be Aboriginal? Why the fuck would you do that? It, it's, it's about LARPing. It's about creating an image of what it is to be Aboriginal. It's not about learning what aboriginal is look one of the maps i closed in before i started this video was a map of victoria victoria for those who don't know is the sec is the la the second smallest state in Vic australia it's about the size of the united kingdom now victoria had list uh, the map i found had listed incomplete and complete uh, Aboriginal, uh, I'm guessing cultures, and the only complete one was from down here. And my own growing up, going out here and spending time out here with my father and his family, I know there were Aboriginals out here still living and speaking and knowing what it was to be who they are. But for the entire rest of the state of Victoria, there was not one complete aboriginal culture in existence we white fellas were pretty cuntish really we, we did a good job of destroying things but they're dragging these city girls out into the middle of the fucking desert telling them they're going to be aboriginal or they're going to learn to do their culture in a short-term project that gets us nowhere so where do we end up Possum pelts were an integral part of the culture of indigenous people who lived and thrived in the country surrounding Lake Mungo. Bushtail possums were once hunted and carefully collected, sewn and decorated to become cloaks worn for both warmth and ceremonial purposes. This is entirely possible. Probably other things too. We've got plenty of ruse out here. Uh, they were handed down through generations. Maybe, however... Kangaroo pelts were more expensive or just harder to get. Now, though, the marsupials are protected, spe are protected species, it means the girls' pelts are imported from New Zealand, where our possums got over and became a pest. But these girls didn't have to do any work on these possums or anything, and what they did was apparently... Aboriginal art depicting their story and their culture and their family story uh, onto these pelts. It's just an art and craft week we weekend, isn't it? This is an Anglicare art and craft weekend. And they took two girls on this art and craft weekend. Now, Georgia bothered me here. For me, it represents decolonisation. Now, where the fuck did you learn decolonisation shit from? 
Seriously. Fucking hell. Where would you be if you weren't colonized? All right. If this is Georgia. Does Georgia think she'd be sitting there in the lovely room that she's in? Obviously, you know, out in the scrub doing her stuff in the bush. Does she think she'd be doing this if it wasn't for colonization? You don't get to just shit on colonization, okay? And us bringing back our practices and continuing them when people fought so hard for us to lose them, Georgia said. Georgia, your people are coastal aboriginals. They are not from the fucking inland. They're not even... Look, this map gives region names to the aboriginal region. Now, I'm guessing this is like a cultural set or a language set, right? So... It'll be dialects and variations. You're outside that. You're not the same people. You're not the same culture. You're not the same heritage. You probably bloody did your shit on fish skins. Not possums. In fact, I doubt possums were the primary thing they did it on out there. <sighs> fucking larping okay their journey is as important now this this was the last bit that gave me the shits and i want to shorten this video from previous attempts to record it i'm a firm believer in the idea that culture will really fix everything when kids are connected to their community and culture they have no reason to muck up it really gives us gives them a sense of purpose this is putting uh a really strong sense of importance onto Aboriginal culture as opposed to other cultures. So there is no other culture that apparently will bond people and, and make them come together. Uh, I ran a radio station for five years in an attempt to get people to come in and bond and to learn things. But apparently I can fail at that because there's no government money for, behind it, but Anglicare can run a, two, uh, a little camping jaunt to do art and craft, and that is going to save these people by bringing them Aboriginal culture. I'd like to show you a picture of what Aboriginal culture brings to communities that are heavily Aboriginal. And I don't mean this as an insult, because I understand I live here. I ran a radio station and a cinema here because I recognise there is fuck all here. There is no government money given to project to, to long term projects and existing things out here. There is just fuck all. And when you've got fuck all to do, this is how you live. I'm gonna bring us around. This is just Google Maps, okay. But I know this town. I like this town. This is Brewarrina. And Brewarrina is a pretty little town. But this is what these towns look like. This is bars and wire over the front of a shop. It's all caged in. And this is the state of most of the buildings up and down this, what is essentially the main street of Brewarrina. And this is only one of many towns like this. If you stay at a hotel along this stretch, along the northern border lands of New South Wales, you stay at a hotel, they lock the gates on the car park at night to stop your cars being stolen or vandalised. The hotels are lock-ins. Right? These are communities that have aboriginal culture they have more aboriginal culture than anyone in this region of australia has apart from these people here I, I i actually have no problem with these people my grandfather drove buses uh he owned a bus company and he'd pick up these people at their uh, where anywhere they were on side of the road but generally it was around where they um i, I think it might have been missionary yeah, he'd pick them up and take them wherever they wanted to go on his bus routes and no problem. Well, I, you know, I've never, never had 
any problem with race around me. My family never had any problem with race. It's it's not racism that we have. It's that we would, would we, we'd like to see better. But while we get shit like this, we're not getting better. What we're getting is this. Right? I live out in this country. I know these places. I drive through them. What we need is more community. But we do not need, necessarily, Aboriginal culture. I'm not against Aboriginal culture. I'm not against you understanding, having your Aboriginal culture, even having your own language and keeping it alive. Good for you. I have had times in my life I sort of wished I had learned my mother's dialect because my mother does not speak Dutch. My mother speaks Hrnehust, which is one of the dialects that used to be in existence in Holland. And by her losing it and by me not learning it, it has become a dead language. But, you know, it's just a thing. If you want to keep those things alive, you go for your life. I understand. I actually, I'm actually trying to get my wife to take audio recordings of her village in China. I want her to, I've, I've been getting her to uh, not just write, but to record people telling them their stories of the village, of uh, Japanese occupation and uh, the revolution and anything else they can think of. And have that history down, but more than the history, the spoken language, because they have their own, just this little village of a couple of thousand people. They're right, there's a village over the next hill, and a village over the next hill, and a village over the next hill in all directions. There's a million people in the valley. This is how tightly packed these people are. But they all have their own dialects in each village. And I doubt anyone's recording these things for prosperity, but we should. And I have no problem with the Aboriginal people doing this. Things that ship me are LARPing and inventing. On the score of inventing, and I'm going to take us back here for this, because, you know, I just want you to focus on... Um, that while I talk about this um, the I was looking for sites I was looking for maps and language barriers and so forth when I was doing the research for this and I closed a couple of sites I now wish I hadn't closed but I did and one of them was on the maps and at the bottom of the page the first thing it does is warn you that there are going to be uh, audio files, videos, images of Aboriginals who may be deceased. My problem with this is I grew up around Aboriginal people. I, uh, Since I moved north, I have spent a lot of years around Aboriginal people. I have many Aboriginal friends. I have people I talk to about these particular subjects. Uh, because I see a failure and I don't like failure around me, right? This is a, a failure that social justice is only making worse. And um, welfare is only making worse, as I've noted. Welfare dependence is destroying the Aboriginal people. But it, it's doing more harm to the Aboriginal people to have them welfare dependent than all the years of settlement. Because we're now not only destroying their cultures, we're destroying them personally. They no longer have the drive or will to succeed. They just get everything given to them, so they're just going to put their hand out and take it. Anyway, this warning about deceased people is invented culture. It came out of nowhere. It's actually associated with Southeast Asian uh, nations who have visual art of gods and, you know, animals and all sorts of things, whereas Aboriginal culture is very much limited in how things were depicted graphically. 
a stick in the sand was essentially the most used item for noting anything. Uh, these girls used possum skins, but as far as I know, there are no possum skins from the past uh, showing us what the past was about or recorded history or depicting the faces of people. It just wasn't part of Aboriginal culture to my understanding. And the Aboriginal people I've known don't seem to have had any problem with depicting faces of people or anything like that. So this seems to have been something that has been taken from somewhere else. Someone said, oh, the Aboriginal people, we can't show their faces in things, or we've got to start warning them, you know. Uh, we don't want to totally do away with the old history. We've got to remember that, you know, we should warn them that there's going to be people portrayed. I'm thinking, don't fucking invent your culture. You're not helping anyone. The second part of that warning was the... um welcome to country or whatever in the hell it is that we've got to do now at the beginning of everything um for those of you not living in australia who might not know this these days in australia any public meeting any uh, government department that's issuing anything uh will now thank the dead black fellas for us nicking their land or whatever in the fuck it is they're doing i went to see my son off to the navy and the induction ceremony started with a uh, thank you to the dead black fellas for the use of their land. I, I was six stories up in a multi-story building, thinking, where the fuck are the black fellas? You know, uh, why are we th why are we virtue signalling to this room full of white blokes and and a few girls? But why were we virtue signalling to these people? That you know. Thank you for the black. Thank you to the black fellas who let us use their land. Just fuck off. You know where that came from. Uh, no, look, a lot of you won't, especially anyone who's from anywhere else in the world. Ernie Dingo, an Aboriginal comedian back in the eighties, wrote skits where a couple of black fellas on building sites or in workplaces were taking the piss out of the white fellas who kept you know, trying to virtual, virtue signal how much they gave a fuck about the Aboriginal people on the job. And so Ernie and his mate would take the piss by saying, why aren't you thanking us for the land, you know? you got to thank us for the use of our land, mate, you know? It was fucking good. It was good comedy. It was good humour. But this joke that Ernie Dingo kicked off back in the 80s, this thanking the blackfellas for using their land has become standard practice in this country you can't run a meeting without doing it i ran many a meeting without doing it but i tell you what it wasn't popular that i wouldn't but i i had meetings where i actually asked people if anyone in the room was aboriginal were told no and said well that's why i'm not doing it because if the black fellas can't get off their asses to come to meetings and be involved in their communities, I don't have to. I, I don't have to virtue signal to you, fucking white fellas. Fuck off. I, I will thank the people in the room for attending. That's as near as you're gonna get. Ah, shit does my head in. I, I, I wish I had Jimmy around to talk to, and hey. For the record, I was going to throw this in as a, a thing, but hey, Joe, if you remember economic class, if you see this or anyone sees this and they remember Casuarina High and economic classes and Joe and I shooting an awful lot of aircraft at the back of the um, classroom, uh, I'm looking for Joe. I'd like to get in touch with Joe. Some He's one of the few people that I've let go in my life that I wish I hadn't let go. But, you know, that's life. Um, Joe and I were great mates. Uh, so, boom, if you're out there, give us a yell. It's honky. <laughs> what can I say? Um, all right, that's me. I've been the anti-theocrat. Um... May your gods remain fictional. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>